41 marathons. This year I'm going to be running the London Marathon. Um, I'm going to try and squeeze under 3 hours 45. I like to try and do it in under 3 hours 40, which is quite ambitious, but hopefully I can do it. In the first episode, Sarah and Kerry were at Portsmouth University, a famous sports research centre. The aim of these tests was to determine the impact of replacing one weekly running session with a swimming session and to see the impact on running performance. Annie, a former triathlon champion, is their coach and is working with them up to the London Marathon on the 23rd of April. Today we are with Sarah and Kerry at the swimming pool. Annie would like to check their swim and to give them some tips and hints. Hi guys. Good to see you. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm good. Hi, Kerry. Okay, so ready for your first swim session? Yes. Yeah. Great. Well, we've got lots of work to do. We're going to work, yeah. work technique, see where you guys are at, and uh, see what we can do and help you improve in your swim. Great. Cool. Can't wait. Okay, Thank so the pool's ready and waiting. Let's get going. Awesome. Okay. Sarah what we need to work on is her fitness more than anything because technically she's really strong all round so with Sarah we'll be doing some pretty solid main sets of lots of hundred metre reps with short rest and really helping boost her swim fitness. So with Kerry we're going to be working on um, his technique and really specifically the sort of trying to get his hips up in the water so he'll be doing a lot of short 25 metre sprints. Sarah's and Kerry's swim programs don't look the same as Sarah's a former water polo swimmer and Kerry is more experienced in running. Just stop there. So we're going to work on your breathing pattern. What do you feel most comfortable with at the moment? Because at some po yeah. point in the swim, you're kind of breathing both sides, and then and then coming back. I guess when you're getting tired, you're just breathing to one side. Yeah, that's uh, exactly. It. I mean, I know it's going to be easier for me to breathe both sides because you get an extra stroke. Yeah. You know, I've been running for years, and my my cardiovascular system is, is pretty good but when you're in the water and you know you have a substance over your mouth on your nose and that you have to lift your head out of the water to breathe that just encourages your, your lungs to work harder. Okay great stuff what we're going to do now is we're going to do 450s so four times 50 metres. Yeah. And you're going to sprint the first 15 metres. We had me doing um, two lengths at a time today. So I did some of it sprinting and some of it a bit more steady, um, just to kind of look at my stroke really and give me a bit of feedback on how I'm, like, how I'm swimming. And the idea is, is you've got to keep your legs, you, you, you're using your arms to do the work and not your legs. So the pool boy is holding your hips up. Am I still kicking or not? No, no, no. You can use a tiny kick just to keep the balance, but the idea with the pool boy is that you don't use your legs, okay? okay. So let's try 50 metres with that. And then these paddles are great. They're a little bit sort of corrective on the stroke, but they also work strength as well. So oh. they've got, you know, a dual purpose. Okay. 
after today's session, I think, I mean, I know it can improve your fitness, but I think having someone there to get, sort of give you pointers on what to do and, you know, give you targets to aim for and things really helps with swimming to kind of improve your fitness. I think the thing that I've learned from, from Annie and generally from swimming is that it's not something that you can, you can fake. It's not something that you can wing if you want to get better at it. You know, sure with running, people can run with good style or bad style and they'll get there in the end. With swimming, if you don't do it properly, you're gonna go nowhere fast. So both guys have quite a big challenge ahead of themselves. They're both looking to set PBs in the marathon in London in a few weeks time. They've got a lot of work to do still yet, but there's plenty of time to do that. After today's session, I'm really pleased with what I've seen and I'm really excited to watch their progress over the next few weeks. So the countdown is on. You'll see both of them in the next episode. That's on April the 23rd, London Marathon Day, when they take their final steps.